The only thing more frustrating than seeing this on your screen is probably seeing this after you got really far ahead and through. Unfortunately, that's something that probably happens a lot, especially with Riot putting in mechanics like objective bounties, shutdowns, and catch-up XP into the game. Comebacks happen now more than they ever have. Add low elo teams just not knowing how to end to the mix, and sometimes it feels like getting ahead early just doesn't matter at all. Fortunately for you, it does. It's just that oftentimes players are much worse at snowballing than they think. Today, we're going to address this issue with something that I've coined the 30 second rule, and you'll have a much better time making sure your games stay on track. And by the way, we created a brand new custom course specifically for this guide at skillcap.com. It's there you can unlock an additional six site exclusive guides where we walk you through exactly how to apply the 30 second rule to escape the specific ranks you find yourself stuck in. Find out more along with the discount code at the end of this guide. Now back to the video. To start this off, let's follow along with a Karma game that I played in Gold Plat ELO. I'll be using support examples in this guide, but this advice applies to every role. The game starts off with me playing pretty aggressively. After all, I'm Karma into a melee champion, so I want to abuse my range and poke to get push on the wave. I'm trading some health away and overall distracting the enemy bot lane with good spacing. They lose track of how many minions we've killed, so it sets us up for a pretty solid level 2 all in. We get Zeri's flash and chunk out our opponents really hard, and due to all of the resources that they lose here, they really have no hope of winning any fight that will happen afterwards. We are rewarded for our efforts, and now we can just push in the wave and hit plates, right? If alarm bells didn't start going off in your head from me saying that, it's probably because you never tried to apply the 30 second rule. But what exactly is that? The 30 second rule is actually incredibly simple. All you need to do is remember to ask yourself, will I be winning in 30 seconds? And you will avoid throwing a lot more often. That's literally it. I mean, okay, it's simple, but there is a lot more to the idea, so let's start exploring it. The reason why we need to ask this question all the time is that you will constantly find yourself in situations where you can go from winning one second to instantly losing in the next. This is true of pretty much any competitive game. It's almost impossible to just keep pressure up all the time from ahead. Whether it's because you're waiting on cooldowns to come up, you're up a stock but at high percent, or you're destroying your friends in Mario Kart and the blue shell exists. God, I fucking hate that item. All tangents aside, we should not expect to constantly have a winning game state in League, but a lot of players get cocky and end up dying for no reason because they try to do too much. At this point, our advantage comes from the extra gold and some experience that we got from the kill. I've used all of my summoners, and my HP bar, well, that's gone too. In 30 seconds, Zeri will be back in lane, having bought items and with full HP. Meanwhile, we'll be stuck not having cashed out on our first blood, and just having less HP than our opponents. Getting plates seems really tempting. Gold is great, obviously, but when you realize that more gold will do absolutely nothing to change the aforementioned problem, it no longer should be. Before you make any decision, ask yourself, will I still be winning in 30 seconds if I do this? If the answer is no, you probably shouldn't do it. If we look back at when Zeri first died, look at her death timer. It's only 8 seconds. That's how much time it takes to press B and recall too. Conveniently, 30 seconds is also about how long the whole process of recalling and walking back to lane takes. So we have absolutely no spare time to hit tower here. Basically, there's no way that we can ever get back to lane before Zeri if we also want to recall. No matter what, she will always have a little bit of time to herself before we're there, even if we base immediately. However, because we will always be losing if we don't recall, we need to do it. And the faster the better to minimize the amount of free time that Zeri has, because, well, more free time for her means less lead for us and more potential to throw. If we didn't base here, we would probably just die in the 2v2 or be absolutely useless in the coming part of the game. But because we did, we come back to Braum being half HP, and having cashed out on Vayne's first blood, we're in a great position to fight over this freeze that's here for us. Zoning off of XP and CS is a very real possibility now that we have resources. If we took plates, this whole fight doesn't happen. And even if we could have had more gold, the harsh reality is that Zeri would have just crashed this wave, and then we couldn't use it to fight, at least not for a while. 
30 seconds really is the magic number because it's also how long minion waves take to go from base to the middle of the lane. So instead of being able to recall, walk back with the minion wave, and fight them on this freeze like we did here, we would instead have to let them push this and the next wave into tower, have the next wave be slow pushing out, have to crash on the wave after that, and then have a wave that's pushing back out. Only after that wave would we be able to really fight and punish because we'd be able to force them to walk up and deal with our item advantage. If you were counting, this is six minion waves. By prioritizing recalling, we were able to be here to contest after wave one. If we hadn't, it would be wave six. If you remember how I said that it takes 30 seconds for a wave to get here, then some simple math tells us that it would take two and a half extra minutes to force our opponents to fight us if we base late. Is that amount of time worth losing for 80 gold each from a plate? Simply put, no. Even after this, we should apply the 30 second rule again in this situation and come up with what to do next. I'll let me from the past explain. Okay, same deal. We are not in a winning position once Braum comes back. So we need to try and get a base timer here, which means I'm gonna start pushing this way back actually, instead of perma freezing it. Because when Braum does come back, we're gonna be on the back foot. Because I'm staying aware of the next 30 seconds and having the foresight to continue trying to stay ahead, we're able to minimize windows for our opponents to capitalize on. And through this, we can continue our snowball. If we had frozen there, it would have been good for a bit, but once Braum was back, we would have run into some problems. We can see exactly what kind of problems I'm talking about by looking at another game I played, this time on Pike. We start off by getting pretty ahead in the lane. The first fight goes our way, even though I suck and miss my initial hook. After the play, we get to push in the wave, and we take a base immediately, all according to plan. We get back in lane in time to fight on the freeze with our item advantage, and the second fight, that goes well too. Except we derail a bit. Really, really good. Now we'll push out the wave again. So part of the reason why we don't want to maintain this freeze, again, is foresight, right? If we hold this freeze here and do not push the wave, and I'm just going to stun them because it will give my minions more time to hit. doesn't do damage, but still helps push wave. Um, if we do not push the wave in and get a reset timer, we will be on the back foot. In the, in the coming seconds. So I need to ping this and have Ash help push. And if she decides to just go to Dragon and Int, then I can't do anything about it. There is a huge problem with what's happening right now. First, I at least need to recall. I have basically no health, and because of that, not really much of a reason to stay. Second, we left a freeze for our opponents. If Ash does Dragon and I help too, not only am I not going to be able to contribute to breaking that freeze afterwards, Ash is not going to have better items, and we're just losing that farm for the foreseeable future because of our health. Don't even get me started on how Echo shouldn't even be doing this drag in the first place to bait her, but I sure as hell at least don't want to tag along for this shipwreck of a play. Ash even stays trying to solo it when Echo and I have both clearly given up on the idea, and obviously she just gets punished by three members of the enemy team who show up. We just didn't have the time to do this. Look, I'm not trying to flame my ADC, I really don't care, because I simply don't expect people to understand at this elo, but it's clear to me from these messages moments later that it is something that warrants a guide on. The more people that know this rule, the more we'll avoid situations like this. You can apply this even when you're not technically getting kills in the lane and winning, it's just as important. This game was absolutely ridiculous, there were just fiesta kills at level 1 for a solid minute. I'll save you all from having to watch that in real time, but all you need to know is there's a reason why we're late to lane, and also down resources. We do have more gold than our opponents, but it's in our pockets, and we haven't spent it. I'm really not even trying to contest the wave at all because of this, and also because we just weren't going to be able to win the push anyways. Lucian was clearly not on the same page as me with this, and is in range to eat a ton of damage from our opponents at level 2. We try our best to disengage while trading some damage back, but we do lose a ton of HP in the process. Um, yeah, this is a pretty rough spot to be in. Obviously, my Lucian didn't really respect the level 2 and kind of just lost all his health for it. So, uh, Our jungler, unfortunately, is playing a champion that's not really going to be able to bail us out, so we're going to be losing lane here for a little bit. I'm just going to try and soak as much XP as possible. That's the most important thing this early on in the game. Um, once we get these two waves, probably, then I'm just going to take a reset. Okay, so I just said I want to take a reset, but is it a good reset? What do you think? The answer is no. 
we're going to have a wave that's pushing out from us, and that's pretty much always bad, like we just saw in the last example. But if I ask, am I going to be winning in the next 30 seconds, the answer is also no. I don't want to sit here and let my bad game state marinate in hopes that it somehow turns out better. This isn't cooking. If I can see 30 seconds in the future and see no hope for my game improving, it's best just to take the loss now. If I'm going to take a bad base, better it be immediately rather than finding out after 3 minutes of being helpless and letting my opponent snowball on me. There is no good base here, only bad and worse. So we recall pretty much immediately, and then we get back to lane. Now, even though we would be down XP in a bit, because we took the loss immediately, we're able to be aggressive here instead of just cowering a mile away from our wave. This ultimately leads to us not just being not behind, but actually double killing the enemy opponents, because they just didn't recognize the state of the game. Now, we make up for all of those minions we lost by taking a bad recall, because we crash the wave into our opponent's tower and deny a ton of farm. Of course, you can see me immediately base and ping Lucian to not hit the plates either, because, well, now that you've seen this guide, you should understand why. To recap, simply ask yourself if you will be winning in the next 30 seconds. If your game state will not improve, or might just get worse, you definitely need to look for some way of improving it, or maintaining it if you have a lead. The 30 second rule is basically a quick fix for helping improve your understanding and implementation of tempo. But there are a million other ways to not only implement this rule into other stages of the game, but also other things that you can do besides just recalling. We just scratched the surface, but hopefully it got you thinking. Let us know in the comments below what your ideas are, as we'd love to hear it. And if you really want to start ranking up, then you need our brand new custom course made specifically for this guide at skillcap.com. It's there you can unlock an additional 6 site exclusive guides where we walk you through exactly how to apply this 30 second rule to escape the specific ranks you find yourself stuck in. That's not all though. With our brand new course page, it's as simple as clicking support, then selecting the macro category, and just like that you have 11 courses, with over 50 guides breaking down how to outsmart your opponents so you can start climbing the ladder. Best part? All of this is risk free with our rank improvement guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Head to skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Discount link in the description below. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.